Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and today we're going to be looking at how to make these ropes here that are tying together these sticks uh, to kind of make the support for this uh, medieval cauldron. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, so this, this, this here, this asset here, is part of uh, a 100 medieval asset pack that I'm creating to sell on my CG Trader store and Turbo Squid store. Uh, so if you want to follow along the process of making those 100 assets, uh, you can go and subscribe to my second uh, channel, Blender Money, where I'll be posting the time lapses of the process of modeling uh, those 100 assets. So yeah, let's go in and start. Well, so by the way, thank you. Uh, thank you to all those people who have come in and subscribed to this channel. Uh, I can see that uh, it's growing a bit faster than I expected, so thank you. Uh, so let's go in and start looking at this, how to make this, these ropes here. So <coughs> we're going to be using uh, the screw modifier for this, and uh, I'm going to use uh, the curve object instead of a mesh uh, to apply the screw modifier. Uh, you, can re as you can achieve the same results using the are uh, the are uh, using the mesh a uh, mesh object but uh i'm choosing to use the curve object because uh, most people don't are not uh, don't are not aware that uh, curve objects also can have modifiers and uh, the screw modifier is one of those uh modifiers that can be applied on the curve object and it also gives you a little bit of a, li a little bit more control than a mesh would, would give you uh, when you're creating what i'm trying to do here so let's add a curve here Shift A curve, Bezier curve. I'll rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Rotate it also in the Z direction, 90 degrees like this. <coughs> and then in the modifiers, you can see we have a few modifiers. Not all the modifiers available for a mesh are also available for a curve. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, we're going to be using the screw modifier. And uh, if you add, apply the screw modifier and it looks like this, uh, that means that uh, you have to play around with this, with the axis. Uh, that you want to use uh, to get uh, the right axis. So the Z is giving us this, uh, the Y is giving us uh, this shape here. Uh, but uh, I want uh, the curve, I want uh, the axis we use to kind of give us a profile that is similar uh, to the shape of our curve here. So, and uh, this is not it here. So let's try, was it X? Yeah. I think X gives us that, and you can see if I turn off this, you can see it's following that curve. Uh, it's kind of spinning it around uh, to kind of create, like uh, if you're using a spin tool uh, with a mesh. So, <coughs> but this is not giving us the results we want. So if you apply the screw effect here, you can see how it starts to twist that around. And uh, let me first reset this. Let me just add this screw effect again. It's called screw and the axis was x uh, if you are in edit mode and move these control points away from the pivot point which is that uh, yellow dot in the middle there if you move them away you can see how you're kind of expanding the radius of whatever this is uh, this spin i'll call it a spin or screw and uh, so uh, this imagine this as let me just Orient, orient this to this. Maybe let me just duplicate this stick here, um, this pole, and use that instead of just creating a new one. So uh, I added a mirror modifier here. So let me first this remove that for a second. <coughs> so if you wanted this to be tied around here, uh, also let me turn on cavity. Sorry, random colors so that we can easily tell the difference. So you would just rotate this and uh, this should be wrapped around here. So, <coughs> and uh, you can push this away uh, to kind of increase how tight or how loose it's tied around uh, the stick. I mean, just I don't want to be looking at this, so something like that. And uh, so if we use the screw, you can see how it's getting tied around. So I don't like this kind of bulge in the curve. So I'll select this and hit V to convert it, this into a vector. Uh, that will flatten uh, this to uh, this edge here uh, to make it a flat surface. And uh, if you increase the screw, <coughs> uh, you can see it just kind of lengthens 
uh, the the rope. But uh, this rope here, uh, it's kind of having a, a large width. Uh, so to reduce that, that you just uh, select the second, go to edit mode, and then select this control point and uh, push it closer. And then the reason uh, I use the curve is that uh, if I wanted to kind of give it a curvy surface, uh, like uh, if I close up, close on this, <coughs> you see mine has a kind of a bend in here, to kind of give it a tighter, make it look like it's a tighter grip uh, on the on the on, on the poles. Uh, so uh, if you want to create a different profile, you can just select these control points and push them out. Uh, this is why I used uh, the curve object because it gives you easier control than a mesh and uh, you can also push them in if you want uh, to get that effect like that. <coughs> but uh, this is too lengthy, so let me just bring it around here and also reduce uh, the thickness a bit like that. Uh, so it's a bit loose, so I'll just go to this view here and I go to edit mode and uh, bring this closer to the pivot point so that it's a tighter grip. And if you want to make more kind of tie around, uh, you just increase the iterations. Or if you don't want to use the iterations, you can use uh, the angle here. That will just spin it around. But uh, the problem is that uh, <coughs> if you go to wireframe, you can see <coughs> when you uh, kind of change the angle here, it's also kind of using uh, uh, the steps uh, you are having here. So the more steps you have, uh, the more high resolution uh, the, the screw will be. So if I increase the steps here, you can see how tighter that is. So this angle here is, is going to depend it's not dependent, but it will depend on the steps here, but uh, it will affect how the final uh, polygon count or the final resolution of uh, your screw. Uh, that's why I would recommend not using the angle. I uh, just keep it to something simple like this, and I just use the iterations like that. <coughs> Let me also reduce uh, the size of this a bit like this, and uh, maybe push it outside a bit. I think I need to center uh, this around. Uh, the problem is that uh, this is also faceted, so if I give it a s subdivision surface, let me give it a supporting loop here, then I think we can have a better, a more tighter, let me just bring it around there. Okay, so uh, this is what we have, and uh, again, you can use the screw to make this tighter or kind of expand it. You can can see uh, what we are getting. So, if you look at uh, the the wire wireframe, you can see that uh, you can see that we have a lot of resolution here, a lot of segments we don't really need uh, on this rope. So, if you go to the curve editor, you can play around with the uh, resolution preview and uh, to reduce uh, the polygon count. I think three or two will be enough for this. And, uh, I think I still also need to push this out and I uh, will reduce uh, the iterations to about two. So to have something like this. And now to kind of make these more tie arounds, uh, you, you would just duplicate this shift D and mirror this on the other axis. <coughs> and, and then we reduce just play around uh, with this screw. So that it looks a bit more organic. And the way they're intersecting like that, when they're intersecting like that, then you need to apply, then after you 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 are satisfied uh, with this screw settings, you can apply that. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't apply for, for curves, so you need to, apply, to convert this to a mesh, and this to a mesh as well. And uh, that should also apply uh, the the modifiers. So now we can come in. You can even join these into one single object so that you only have to worry about one single object. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, we're getting the same color now. We don't see the intersection uh, easily. So 
but uh, to make this go outside of the intersection, uh, so that they're not intersecting, you just come in and start moving those polygons around. I usually also turn on proportional editing by hitting O, or just turn it on here, and uh, make sure you have connected on, uh, mostly if you have this joined, and then push this out. Like that. <coughs> and uh, sometimes make sure make one go over the other and uh, the, the, the other technique uh, it go on top of the other like this uh, so for this here you can select this and push it out like that uh, so if I turn on subdivision surfaces for this you can see how it starts to look like crops but uh, the problem is that I uh, if you look at this and compare it to uh, the ropes I made, uh, these look a bit thicker than uh, these uh, that look like planes uh, that don't have any dimension to them. So the way you add that, you can just add a solidify modifier, so uh, this here. Uh, you can put it below our uh, subdivision surface, but uh, uh, since I'm going to be using these selling these as game assets. I don't want them to have a lot of polygons. So what, what I would do is uh, turn on only fill rim. So if I, let me first isolate this, you can see that uh, it has uh, this side and this side, uh, the top side and uh, bottom side. So if I only fill rims, I can see I'm only filling one side, but uh, I'm keeping, I'm maintaining the volume effect there. Uh, so, but uh, problem is that my normals are facing the wrong direction so I can either flip them here or just use control sh shift n to flip them like that uh, and see now we are getting that volume effect and uh, I wouldn't apply the modif this modifier just yet uh, because you don't know when you want to increase uh, the thickness of your rope so I can also do this to this you can see yeah and see how that looks better. <coughs> now, yeah, so again, you just come in and start moving some of these vertices outside, push them outside like that, so that then there is no intersection they're not intersecting with uh, the rest of the uh, the rope with, uh, with the other ropes like that. And uh, you can keep on layering these if you want. So you can duplicate this, push it around, maybe scale it even down, maybe mirror it. You can even select one part like this Turn on proportional editing and make sure it's connected and uh, just inc play around with fall off. Basically what you're doing is uh, try to make it a bit more, more organic and uh, wherever it looks like uh, it's intersecting, you start pushing them outside uh, like that. Uh, so if you just want to push to kind of make this uh, the radius of this rope a bit outside, you can just select everything and use Alt S to push everything along its normal, and I can expand or kind of contract along uh, its normal like that. Uh, you don't ha you don't need the propo the proportional editing or fall off, so just use Alt S to kind of scale this along its normal. So and see, you can make more and more layers. Now you can also select a portion of this, turn on proportional editing, and start moving those around. Even use Alt S to scale some of that, just a portion of that around like that. Yeah, so basically that's how I did. Let me make sure I didn't delete my ropes. Revert. 
yeah so basically that's how I did uh, these robes I, I did spend a lot of time uh, like around merging these here uh, to this here so uh, you can watch uh, the entire time lapse if you the time lapse if you want uh, to look at how I did that those there and uh, these here uh, you can also see that uh, I didn't apply uh, the solidify modifier in case I wanted to increase uh, the volume or the thickness of the ropes uh, so thank you for watching uh, again you can come back you can go to this second channel and uh, subscribe to watch uh, the, the entire process of making the 100 uh, medieval asset pack uh, that I'll be selling on Turbo Squid and uh, uh, CG Trader. So thank you for watching.